Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to Pace Yourself. Today we're going to be talking about a scheduled trigger flow and how to create one that sends emails to a campaign member about their upcoming workshop. So the use case is here on our screen. So it says send an email reminding campaign members about their upcoming workshop. We've got three things we have to make sure we get done. Send it seven days prior to the event, send it one day prior to the event and make sure it's recorded on that contact page the email was sent. So doing the planning for this flow, make sure you have already set up what you need for the flow to work. So we need an email template to send. We need an email alert to trigger that send. We need a date for the flow to be triggered off and probably a status to filter how many campaign members can actually come into the flow. So let's go ahead into Salesforce and to start creating our flow, we've gone into setup found flow by typing it into our quick find box, clicking on flow. And once we're here, we click new flow. So today we said we were going to start a scheduled trigger flow. So I'm going to click scheduled trigger flow. This is opposed to a record trigger flow. I chose scheduled trigger flow for this use case because I wanted to make sure an email gets sent at a reasonable time of day so that the customer isn't bothered during the evening. If something changes um, in our campaign members that triggers them to enter the flow at an unreasonable hour. So the record trigger flow would be able to send that based on something changing in the record where I want it to be more consistent and at a particular time of day. So every day I want it to evaluate the database and see if someone enter is meets the conditions to enter our flow. So go ahead and click create. So the first thing we have to do is set our schedule. So our schedule is daily every day. So I'm going to hit at starts today and the reasonable hour is going to be a 10 a.m. And I want it to be daily, not weekly, not just once. I want it definitely to run every day. Now we have the ability to actually save it. So I'm going to recommend saving your flow straight away so you don't lose anything. And I like using the naming convention ST at the front if it is a scheduled trigger flow. That can be a completely up to you what your naming conventions are. Hit tab fills in my API name. Go ahead and click save. Get a couple of warnings that pop up because there's nothing in our elements, but that's where we're getting to. So going back to our start, we're going to go ahead and choose our object. So the object was listed in our use case and that was campaign member. You can obviously have a custom object that perhaps stores all your uh, training workshops on it with all the information there. Um, and reference that object instead and maybe it's you only have one contact per visit you go on site to and then you can reference that object but ultimately this use case is our campaign member so the fields that we're actually looking at is to make sure the status was confirmed um, in our use case not have been attended already so I'm going to click confirmed and we're going to add another condition and that being around the event date. So we definitely don't want someone to enter the flow if they don't even have an event date on their profile. So we're going to say if the event date is null and then we're going to make that false. So it's actually saying the event date is not null. That's what that value means and click done. So now we've done our start element. The next one we have to do is actually put something into the flow that'll start the decisions. So the first decision we were given was it has to be related to the days coming up to the event. So we have to decide on something. So the first thing I'm going to add to my flow screen is actually called the decision element. And the first thing we're asked to do is give it a label. Labels refer to just this element, just what you're calling this particular thing sitting on the flow. It doesn't reference anything else. So call it what you need to and the outcome. The first outcome was seven days until the workshop. So again, just a label referencing this particular outcome. Go ahead and click tab and it will fill in our API name. So for it to go down the decision path of seven days until the event, we have to actually look for where on that record does it tell us that it's seven days until the event. 
So on our on our campaign, I'm going to go to our campaign member. And we can see here two custom fields on the campaign. One is event date and one is days until the event. So days until the event is a formula field, just looking at the the event date compared to today and how many days are in between and giving us a numerical value. So that is a field we want our flow to look at to get that value. So heading back to my flow and I'm going to find that field. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the global variables and we're going to reference dollar sign record which is showing you the record that started the flow so like entered into the flow so it's going to be the campaign member record and we're now going to find that field so it was called days until event perfect now we want it to be equal to the numerical value of seven now because it's looking for a number we don't have to put anything else in that value box apart from the number that we want it to find so we actually have another outcome that we need to put in there based on our use case and that is the day before the event so again i'm referencing the exact same campaign member and then i'm going to find that days until event equals and this time the value is one being the day before and the default outcome I can leave or I can change to something of my choosing and go ahead and click done. Now you can see our flow screen has separated those decisions out into three different parts and we can continue to add elements going down each path. So we're going to start from the left seven days until the event. So what we need to do based on our use case was send an email and record that that email was sent on the contact profile it was sent to. So we're going to click on our add element button and what are we going to choose? So this one's a pretty simple one. We just need it to actually perform an action outside the flow. So I go ahead and click action. And what I want it to do is actually send an email alert. So emails through flow, I'll go down and show you are here and they only give you send simple email, send simple email doesn't work in this use case because I have a HTML nicely populated email that has all the merge tags on it that I know works and I don't really feel like redoing that amount of work within each flow. So at the moment all I have as an option is actually triggering that nicely created email template from an email alert. So email alerts are part of workflow and are not affected by the recent changes to Process Builder and Workflows uh, and Prioritizing Flow. So they, these are still good to use. So when I've typed in alert, my current email alerts come up. So I know which one I want to choose, which is one week reminder email. So again, it's just asking us for a label. I like to just use the name of the email alert that we're using and then set input values. So what value is being passed through to this email alert and as always it's actually going to be our record campaign member ID. So we go to our record, so the campaign member that actually started this flow, find our campaign member ID which is just here and go ahead and click done. So now we've met that requirement of send an email seven days prior to the event but we haven't met the next one which was record that that has happened. So an email alert when it sends an email template in Salesforce you may know doesn't actually record it against anything on the contact. So we have to actually force create some sort of record and so what we're going to do is click on our add element button and this one here is going to be pretty simple it's actually just adding another action but this time we're going to choose task. Now a task will be something that shows up in the activity timeline on the contact profile. So that perfectly represents what similar emails do when they get recorded against a contact as a send, similar to if you're going to send straight from a contacts page. So once I click task, I get all the task options here. The one I want all the way down the bottom being new task. It says actually quick action as a prefix to this. It gives me a quick hint that everything that I'm going to be now shown uh, to fill in for this action will be everything that the quick actions global layout is actually um, showing. So go ahead and click that. Again, we're just going to quickly add a label. 
And again, these input set input values. So what do you want the task to have on the record? And these are ones that, yes, I can see on our global layout for the quick action new task. So the assign to ID is just who created the task pretty much. And we're just going to pretty simply have the record. So whoever, whoever owned this campaign, that's going to be the person that created the task. You can obviously create any assigned to IZ. You can just create the user working at the time, the owner of the contact. Um, that's just an example I'm going to use. So the due date, I do want it to make sure it looks like it's closed. So there's no action required, um, but I don't have a particular date value. So what I do need to do is actually reference a date value. So I can't use a dynamic date in this particular field. So what I'm actually going to reference, similar to how you can go through the record that entered the campaign, I'm actually, and similar to how Process Builder, you could reference organizational fields, I'm going to go into the flow. So I'm actually going to go into the flow that is running at the moment, so the one we're editing. I'm going to use the current date. So when this flow gets triggered on this campaign member, use that date to reference on this task. So we'll show you the date that it was sent. So the name ID, this is referencing who the contact is that you want the task to be, so which is actually the person we're sending the email to. So we want to make sure we get to the record being a campaign member. And then in the campaign member, you can see the contact is related here and you get to look through to the next level. And then on the next level, I just want to find the ID, which is here and click on that one. Related record ID and related to ID is similar to how you can reference the task on different objects in the system. And this one here, I'm actually going to reference the campaign that this email was triggered off pretty much. So we're going to go to the record being the campaign member and go ahead and find that campaign ID. I don't need to go through to the campaign member ID related information because I know that it's just sitting here going to reference that one right there. I don't need any of the lookup fields. The next three. Uh, so this one here status, we're going to fill in as completed. You can see that it is actually representing the data type pick list, but there is no pick list values shown to me when I clicked into that field. This is just something flow does. And I have to type in the text value of that pick list exactly. So I know that it would reference it. If you get it wrong, it'll fail. The subject line, I like to use the prefix email sent and then what the subject line of that email was so that I can have multiple tasks on a contact page, but I know which task references which email so that it, knows, it doesn't just say email sent. And then type, I'm going to choose email. This is a similar one to status. It's a pick list field. I know the pick list value is email that I want to reference. So I'm going to just type in the text value and go ahead and click done. So you can now see that side of the flow has been populated. Go ahead and click save and you can continue on and do the rest of them. I'm just going to quickly debug it to show you the use case in action. So let's go ahead and click debug. I do not run to run the flow in rollback mode, which is often best practice because I want the actions to actually be created and shown on the contact profile to make sure that our actions are actually working. So I'm going to go ahead and click done, run. And you can see that it has referenced all the left hand side and it has gone through every single action until the end meaning that it has seen that the outcome conditions are met being that it's seven days prior to the event and the email was sent and then the task was created. So here we're on the contact um, that we we're utilizing as the example and you can see the task was created on the right hand side underneath the activities timeline and says the email sent one week to go and references that campaign that it was sent off. And if we go to the campaign again on the right hand side, you can see that this was sent to that particular contact. So keeping in mind whether that particular related link is relevant for your, your use case, because ultimately you'll have 21 of these piled down the right hand side of your activity timeline. So whether that's what you want or not, that's the example use case. 
So now that debugged work, I'm going to go back to and edit all of these just really quickly to make sure that we've got the exact use case. So the next element I'm actually going to copy, use the copy element feature from the task we created before so we don't have to retype out all those fields. So I'm going to have to click copy and then click on add element and then paste copied element shows up. I will just have to go in to edit the element and change the subject line. So now we have built out our scheduled trigger flow to do exactly what our use case has done was said to do uh, the seven days prior, the one day prior to the event, and then if it does not match, it'll go down this and not trigger anything at all. So that is scheduled trigger flow. Thank you for tuning in. This is Mia Pacey with Pace Yourself.